What is up guys, Politics Gaming here, and today we are doing a brand new live stream for the political process. They just released a brand new update for the political process. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have already heard about this. We are now one freaking day away from the end of this presidential election. Good God, this thing has been horrible. I want to die. Please help me. This presidential election has been whacked out crazy. Um, this whole year has just been horrible. So I'm finally glad this presidential is coming. This presidential election is coming to an end. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm pretty certain that Donald Trump is gonna is gonna win. Uh, but that's probably a hoped dream at this point. The American electorate has finally already decided what they're gonna do so we're gonna find out pretty much in the next couple of days uh, about what uh, that decision will be um but anyway let's go ahead and start off this election simulator tool with the political process uh there's a lot of new features in this game i'm actually going to show you guys before we actually get into the election prediction uh, simulator I'm actually going to show you a lot of these new features that we're actually seeing that we're going to be seeing uh, very soon in this game I actually did ask uh, if the creator of this game Vlerim I okay I'm gonna just call him V uh, V basically uh, emailed me whenever he updated the game and then told me about it and I really like it so there's a lot of new policy positions that have no effect on public opinion uh, but these are basically outliers to new metrics that are probably going to be coming up in the game uh, and I'm gonna be going Going through each and every one of these policies represent your position on every type of it political issue they are used during election campaigns and tell the voters where you stand on each issue if the voters disagree with your policies they will be less likely to vote for you policies can be changed at any time during an election campaign from the policy tab in the campaign election campaign menu note there are currently some uh, policy positions that have no effect on election calculations. These policies will be marked with no effect at the end of their descriptions. And uh, I'm going to go over a couple of the new ones. So in economic policy, the brand new feature that we see right here is do you support or oppose universal basic income, a program that provides a fixed amount of income to every citizen every month. This has no effect, but we can support or oppose it. Uh, in tax policy, we have the regular tax policies that we have, uh, and then we have the raise taxes or to increase spending or lower taxes, decrease spending for economic growth. Uh, this is the flat tax question. Then we have a brand new question, which is, do you support or oppose a carbon tax, a tax on carbon emissions produced by companies? Or do you oppose, support or oppose a wealth tax, an increase on the tax rate for the wealthiest individuals, which has no effect? Uh, on gun policy, we have a couple of new ones right here. We have uh, not these first three oppose the banning of the sale of assault weapons then we have stand your ground laws and then we have uh, do you support or oppose a ban on the sale of handguns that has no effect it is a brand new feature do you support or oppose banning the sale of guns to individuals with a mental illness no effect uh, do you have support or oppose creating a federal database to track gun sales no effect do you support or oppose allowing individuals with concealed carry permits to carry concealed guns in more places no effect uh, do you support or oppose allowing teachers and staff to carry guns inside of schools? No effect. Do you support or oppose uh, decreasing the waiting period to buy a gun? Oh, that's going to be a really fun one. I'm going to have a lot of fun making a waiting period for, uh, for gun purchases as a federal legislature. Um, sleep is useless. Yep, I don't think I'm going to be getting any sleep tonight. It's going to be gonna be crazy i'm gonna be getting up really early tomorrow morning gonna be setting everything up i'm actually probably gonna be able to show you guys uh just a little quick peek uh to what my election coverage is gonna be looking like uh do you support or oppose allowing concealed carry per carry without a permit anyone would be allowed to con allowed to conceal a firearm on themselves without a permit uh do you support or oppose no effect 
Uh, then we have education policy. We have the regular three that we had in the original game. And then we have do you support or oppose school choice, a policy where parents are allowed to use tax funds designated for their child to select which public or private school their child will attend, support or oppose. Do you support or oppose free tuition for public colleges and universities? No effect. Uh, then we have immigration policy. We have the... Uh, citizenship for illegal immigrants, then we have the tightening of border security at the U.S.-Mexico border, then we have uh, the short-term visas for job skills, and then we have brand new ones that have no effect, which is do you support or oppose legislation that would deny U.S. citizenship to a, sh to a child born in the United States if their parents are not U.S. citizens, uh, which this is actually talking about the 14th Amendment of the United States. Uh, do you support or oppose legislation that would give legal resident status to immigrants uh, brought to the country illegally as children? Uh, no effect. Then we have miscellaneous policy. We have the GMO question. Then we have, uh, do you support or oppose increasing funding for science? Then we have the de death penalty question, which has no effect, but I'm glad that we have the death penalty back in the game. Do you support or oppose abolishing the electoral college so that presidential electioners are decided by the popular vote? No effect. Uh, do you support or oppose labor unions? No effect. Uh, in social policy, we have... Um, yep, there is. A, this is a brand new update. These are all brand new policy positions that I'm reading through. In social policy, we have the uh, reduce, reduction of the wage gap. Then we have the legalization of uh, same-sex marriage. Then we have... Uh, do you support or oppose providing the same government benefits to same-sex married couples as are provided to heter heterosexual married couples? Uh, that still has an effect because that's actually um, in the game. Then we have the marijuana question. Then we have the abortion question, the pro-choice or pro-life question. Uh, then we have, do you support or oppose uh, the funding reproductive health programs that perform abortions even if the funding provided is not used toward abortions? Uh, then we have the food stamp question, the social security programs question. Uh, then we actually have a brand new one. Do you support or oppose allowing transgender individuals to serve in the military? No effect. Uh, so we can actually support or oppose uh, allowing transgender gender individuals to serve uh energy policy we have solar wind natural gas oil nuclear and coal so that hasn't changed uh in environmental policy we have when it comes to environmental policy which should take priority the preservation of the environment or growth of the economy we have uh, that is the same one that we've had before then we have uh which one causes uh global warming humans nature or does not exist uh do you support or oppose blah 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 these are not new we have uh, two brand new ones in the environmental policy. So this is, do you support or oppose the Green New Deal? A plan to address climate change by investing in renewable energy and energy efficient uh, infrastructure. No effect. Are we going to support or oppose? Uh, do you support or oppose reducing the use of fossil fuels? No, no effect. Uh, so I guess this is going to be one of the ways that you could probably... Uh, change the policy on energy to uh, kind of like get them into uh, kind of get the uh, uh, metrics because there's no way to actually affect energy policy. Energy policy seems to just move away from fossil fuels and then move toward uh, like renewable energies just on its own for some reason. So that's already preset into the game. Uh, military policy. Do you want to increase, decrease, or maintain current military spending levels? Then we have uh, health policy. Uh, health policy. We have a couple of new ones. We have, do you support or oppose a single-payer health care system? Do you support or oppose a public health care option? This means a public option. This uh, this would allow individuals to opt into a public health care program such as Medicare or continue using private health insurance, which is no effect. So the public option in uh, the political process is coming. Uh, do you support or oppose regulating prescription drug prices? So, uh, this has no effect yet, but that's going to be a great thing to affect. Uh, do you support or oppose allowing people between the ages of 50 and 64 to purchase Medicare coverage? No effect. Uh, that means that you would have the ability to expand a Medicare to people that are turning 50 years old uh, just because uh, you feel like it. <laughs> uh, do you support or oppose uh, prohibiting insurance companies from denying coverage to p individuals with pre-existing conditions? Uh, no effect, but that is a great addition to this game. Can't wait to see that become a thing. Uh, do you support or oppose prohibiting help? 
uh, insurance companies from denying coverage to pregnant women. So you can actually, uh, from charging, so we have the deny, de denial of coverage, then we have from charging sick individuals higher pre premiums. Do you support or oppose prohibiting insurance companies from charging sick individuals higher premiums than uh, healthy individuals? No effect. Uh, so we can support or oppose that, uh, but it, again, does no effect on uh the policy that we actually have oh we actually have a brand new one suggested party we have democrat and republican right now we have no independent as of yet uh, but the last ones that we have we have the supporter opposed requiring insurance companies to cover the cost of most preventative service services uh that could actually um maybe even hurt the economy in the long run uh, do you support or oppose prohibiting health insurance companies from uh, setting a limb on how much health care coverage they can provide over a person's lifetime? No effect. Uh, so these are all the brand new options in the game. So I... Uh, God, I can't think right now. Uh, those are all the brand new options in the game. So I'm gr glad that uh, he actually added those. Those are going to be a lot of different... Uh, things that he's going to be going off of as of the new metrics that are going to be coming into the game. So if uh, that's how we actually see this game update with uh, new questions and a new metrics uh, sooner or later, that's going to be uh, a great way to uh, do that. So let's go over to election simulators, go to new election and let's go over to presidency. We can actually simulate the primary election or we can simulate the general election. We're going to simulate the general election. All right, uh, getting started. Use the candidates tab to add new candidates to the election. Then we can change each candidate's attributes, appearances, uh, policies, experience, and other characteristics by uh, clicking on the customize option under their portrait. Use the vote factors to adjust how much each factor influences the election. The uh, vote factors are what e voters determine to how they will vote. Uh, the options tab, then blah, 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 blah. Then we have turnout. Turnout plays a important role in determining the winner of an election. Make sure to adjust the factors in the turnout tab to get ac accurate results. Uh, and then candidates. After making changes to the candidates' policies, make sure to go to the advanced tab and click on the button up to update their approval rating. The game will calculate the new approval rating based on policy support. Also, a change of vo changing voter also change of voter enthusiasm, which is a usually equivalent to approval rating. If you want to know what the approval rating and voter enthusiasm to be, you do not need to click the update button. Uh, a candidate's experience is represented by political points. Uh, that these can be adjusted in the advanced tab when customizing a candidate. For reference, the campaign mode uses the following values for each term in po particular office. City Council 100, State House 250, U.S. House 200, uh, 2500, Senator 20,000, Vice President 1 million, and then President 2 million. If you load a character preset, make sure to update the values in the advanced tab. Then we have saving and loading. All right, let's go over to the uh, candidates and then let's go ahead and uh, make our candidates. So we got Simon Rich and Cecil Fletcher. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this guy the Republican. Uh, new uh, metrics that we also have, we actually have ancestry. So we can have an African person, Asian, Bangladeshi, Chinese, European, Filipino, Hispanic, Indian, Japanese, Korean, Middle Eastern, mixed, Native American, Pakistani, and Vietnamese. Uh, these are actually some of the biggest eight, uh, demographic groups in uh, the United States. So that's really good that they actually added that. Um... All right, let's go over to appearance and then policy. Let's do uh, policy presets and then let's do a conservative fiscal policy and then uh, let's do a moderate uh, for that since we're gonna try to simulate the uh, election. So we're gonna be doing um, economy, taxes, and let's do what is trump's third thing we're going to be going right off of the 2020 presidential election let's do crime actually uh, these are probably going to be some of the biggest things that uh trump is probably going to do uh i think we could go over to customize policy and no not randomize let's do liberal and liberal 
and then history that doesn't matter uh vote factors let's go over to vote factors and then let's do a national vote um so might need might be needing y'all's help make an independent game uh candidate um see this is actually just one of the things this election prediction thing i just wanted to do this at least once uh before the election because uh it's actually a really interesting thing because you can go through literally every state and then affect their um basically their uh just results um it's a lot to kind of deal with but let me see what i can do so we have district nationally we have let's look at some of the current day polls right now 316 million people I'm gonna go ahead and look at real clear, real clear politics. I'm gonna go get some of the uh, most recent polls that have actually come out. So we have, go over here, latest polls, and try and win California. Yeah, sure. After this play campaign mode, uh, depends on how long, um, depends on how long it actually takes me to set this up. Um, Hispanic, we have. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down to about. 13.7 apparently hispanic turnout is actually a little bit higher than african turnout even though um well actually yeah that actually doesn't make a lot of sense uh, african african americans make up about 13 percent of the population and then hispanics make up about maybe 20 percent um european ancestry 61.5 percent uh let's look at the national so we have 44 39 and 17 uh for that let's go ahead and go off of the most recent poll by ID ibd or tip uh we're gonna go ahead and set this over to uh this is going to be 49 for the democrats 46 for the republicans and about two no let's do three for the independents um this is going to be nationally and then this should probably affect about every other state arizona so it looks like republicans are actually ahead in arizona what if we do 50 47 and 3 let's go ahead and calculate those results Wow, look at that big, big Democratic wave, except this map looks really awful. Uh, <laughs> what happened? What happened? Literally, it's like the vote has been turned around. Oh my god, that's disgusting. I mean, yeah, see, I think I kind of flipped around the, the results. Stranger the left. I mean, the Republican still wins. I mean, look at that. They literally got all of the Democratic states and then they win by 311 electoral votes. See, that's why the Electoral College ain't fair against Republicans. Like, geez. Now, this is an actual party switch. <laughs> that's disgusting. Yeah, I know it is. It's it. Look at this. Look closer. Look closer. Look at this. Nebraska is blue. Uh, South and North Dakota are blue. Idaho is blue. What happened in Idaho? Uh, look at that. Democrats got 82% of the vote and 42% of the independents. Oh, God. Uh, wait, this is kind of flipped. S the blue? Wait, it's... B oh, no. Oh, no, the game is bugged. Look, the game is bugged. It thinks it's the Democrat. What's going on? Yeah, the Democrat wins in Minnesota by a very slight margin. I mean, hey, take these into account for Minnesota. This is what the what the vote share looks like. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I might actually have to play the freaking game because this is kind of bugged. Um, big. I mean, I mean, I mean. Okay, go ahead and take this as the prediction because. Uh, uh, just just switch around the colors um, this this is kind of funny 
What about California? What'd that look like? 58 to 41 in the state of California. 55 electoral votes got given over to the Republican Party by accident. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Democrat still loses by a very small margin of popular vote, though, gets won by the Republican 50.1 to 49.9. Uh, this might end up being the election. I mean, 50, I mean, just Donald Trump barely winning the popular vote by 50.1 by about 0.2%. Uh, 1972 election colors. No, not, no, not 1972. 1972 would be everything would be one color except Massachusetts. Uh, okay, let's go to turnout district. Let's do uh, another poll, actually, and see what happens. Um, I'm going to be doing a Rasmussen poll. This is going to be 48 for the Democrats, and then 47 for the Republicans. And, uh, th well, that's uh, Trump versus Biden without an independent vote. Um, that's could... I mean, that was 1,500 likely voters. That's a... That's a lot, actually. And that literally puts Biden ahead one point, so... Alright, let's uh, do this one more time. See what happens. Uh, not that much change in the electoral maps. Looks like the same. I think this is bugged. This has to be bugged. Um, it's... Odd. Okay. Arizona, I'm gonna go ahead and make a little bit of an electoral map. Uh, California Democrat, Colorado Democrat, uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and play the actual game. Let's go ahead and put Florida as a Republican, uh, Georgia as a Republican, um, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, let's go ahead and put them as a Republican. There's a new poll out of Iowa that actually had the Republicans up seven points. Uh, going over to Maine, let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and put that over as a Democrat. Uh, we are at 259 electoral votes to 219 electoral votes. Uh, let's continue to go down Michigan. I think Michigan might end up staying with the Democrats. Possibly a Republican Minnesota. Uh, that puts us at 269 electoral votes. New Hampshire is probably going to be uh, staying with the Democratic Party, but there's a chance that they actually might be Republican. Uh, North Carolina's Republican, Ohio's Republican, Oklahoma's Republican, uh, Pennsylvania. Let's go ahead and throw you over to the Republican column since there's a lot of good news for the Republicans coming out of the state of Minnesota, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, going over to Wisconsin, this is going to be the last 10 electoral votes that we need to give out to any candidate. And then, uh, let's go ahead and give that over to the Republican, 299 electoral votes to 239. Uh... Yeah, I think this is bugged. <laughs> uh, we already went through that. Uh, yeah, so uh, lovely, but um, uh, government approval rating. Actually, let's put this. <laughs> let's put this at. Uh, let's put this at. Uh, well, uh, actually, government approval rating, not presidential approval rating. Government approval rating. That's actually uh, a president's uh, political party, Republican, four years in office. President is running for re-election, true. Uh, election type, primary, election year presidential, and then Democratic primary. Wait, I think I just got it. Calculate. Nope, that wasn't it. Um, options. So we have party control represents how much control either party has over the government. Then we have... Uh, Democrats 75, Democrats 100, Republicans 75, so Republicans have 75% of the government control. Um, go to results, turnouts, um, 30? Let's do one independent, and then 49. Whoa, hang on, not 100. Ah, damn it! Uh, 49, 49, 49 to 50. Uh, let's see what this looks like. Calculate. Uh, Minnesota ends up getting edged out for the Republican. Um, lots. What? 349 electoral votes to 189 electoral votes. Uh, the color is still switched. I really don't know what this is. 
Um, they took the br colors from British British parties. Red was Labour and blue is Conservative. See, yeah, I mean, if we're looking at it on a British thing, then uh, then we have uh, blue for Conservative and red for Labour. So that I, that makes a lot of sense. But I mean, if if it, if the game is literally just about the United States, it needs to be it needs to be backwards. Uh, let's all right. Let's go ahead and go to uh, exit. And then let's go to campaign mode. Let's go to Nevada. Uh, let's go ahead and continue the game as Luke Clayton. Uh, gonna be getting out of that election prediction tool since you guys didn't want to see a lot of that. But um, let's continue to go. We are uh, serving from 2017 to 2023. So we are still in our first term. Let's go over to legislation. Um, Social Security, let's look at this. Let's, 2018, let's go ahead and increase the um, eligibility age from 67 to 68. That's all I want to change. Uh, probably should actually get uh, passed, but the president actually opposes Senate Bill 8. Um, got Joe Biden for president. You should post it on your YouTube channel, no joke. <laughs> um... Let me, so the president opposes the bill that I just introduced. Let's go ahead and support it. Uh, not even survives uh, getting out of committee. So that was uh, a failure. Uh, let's go to the next day. So we are at the end of 2018. Mayor Jeremy Solikov will not seek re-election. If you run in this election, you have a very good chance of winning. Uh, nomination process for a party leader. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and throw my hat into the ring uh, in this party leadership contest. Uh, we have zero <laughs> votes. Come on. Come on. I try to do these things and then no one likes me. Uh, so then Denzel Miller becomes the Senate Majority Leader by 39 votes. Uh, let's go over to selection of committees and then let's be on the health committee and then let's be on the judiciary committee. Uh, let's be the... Um, let's be the subcommittee chair of the primary health and retirement security. Uh, this, this, uh, so this has uh, jurisdiction over a wide variety of healthcare and retirement issues. It does not have jurisdiction over Medicare and Social Security because these programs contain a payroll tax, uh, placing them within the jurisdiction of the finance committee. Uh, so let's be the subcommittee chair of the primary health and retirement security. A committee and then let's be on the oversight agency action federal rights and federal courts committee uh so that's going to be mine and then let's do a uh, caucus chair let's go ahead and throw my hat into the ring for that caucus chair membership too uh, we got one vote for myself let's go ahead and give myself another vote but we barely uh are able to get onto the caucus chair so we uh better luck next year basically um Let's go over to profile, history, stats, policy, um, elections, and where is, so we have party. I know independent was in there, but that was on the election prediction. Uh, the independent is still not a thing on the regular game, so we still cannot run as an independent um, for our own sake. Um, eliminate uh, Medicaid expansion, 96 to 4 out of the Senate, so good job getting out of the Senate. Uh, let's continue to go budget conference uh, resolution, and let's go ahead and support. Uh, gets a lot of Republican support, I think my committee actually, or my caucus actually, went over and supported it, so uh, got the entire uh, moderate caucus to support it, and helps it pass the Senate. Uh, so that was great. Uh, legislation. Speaking of $15, should I increase the minimum wage? Uh, low income school grants. Actually, let's, let's go over here. Let's increase the average benefits to $2,000. See if that can actually get passed. Uh, amendment votes from 2019 Let's go ahead and support that out of committee. Uh, and then let's hope that this actually gets past committee. And 20 to 3, awesome, 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 gets passed so that uh, we can actually shoot to get it up above uh, 10000 or $2,000. Yeah, see, 
If you support or oppose this amendment, let's oppose. Uh, 56 to 44 gets passed. Uh, so they... At least it gets increased, what, $25? So that kind of sucks. Um, let's oppose. Um, Republicans oppose it, but not enough. So uh, definitely did not get the support of my own but the president does actually oppose the bill so hopefully it either gets rejected in the house of representatives or gets vetoed by the president of the united states gets out of the house 38 to 0 uh and unanimously gets passed <laughs> wow unanimous support in the house of representatives but barely got past the senate so the president has vetoed the bill and it will not become law so that's kind of saves my ass a little bit because my bill got skewered uh, as it got through those committees uh, let's go over to federal disability uh, medicare medicaid uh, medicaid expansion uh let's do yeah we're not going to touch that uh <clears throat> immigration let's go ahead and go to till we can actually see defense appropriations so let's say no Let's continue to go to this. Uh, see, this is kind of, at least at the moment, uh, political process is literally just a clicking contest until you get to your next election. Uh, Senate. Senate is kind of sometimes not fun because it's literally just you just doing this for what? I mean, I got two years before the next the next Senate election. Uh, I've just discovered you you like three days ago because of this game, and I'm gonna buy it. Your videos are good. Thank you so much, Martin. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys are watching this, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you guys want to see more content like this, uh, supporting me in a more personal way, like super chatting, definitely does help me out. Uh, so if you guys are, uh, if you if you are if you can, uh, that does help my channel tremendously. Um, didn't uh, get that much in. Uh, get that much last month so hopefully this month's gonna be a little bit better uh, in terms of that uh, but let's go over to income tax let's not mess with a uh, you can sponsor more legislation yeah see sponsoring more legislation but if I sponsor more legislation then I'm probably not gonna be I'm gonna be losing a lot of support among my Republican colleagues uh, look I only have five out of nine uh, in the moderate Republican caucus, which is my caucus, they only like me 64% of the time. So I really need to snap uh, TANF. Um, like, I need to get rid of a public assistance program for them to even... Well, actually, I mean... Hang on. Let's go over here. I am a part of the moderate Republican caucus, but... Let's go ahead and join the Republican Conservative Committee. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and... Okay, so he's a part of the Republican Conservative Committee now. Uh, so joining, like removing myself from the caucus and then le and then going into another caucus, uh, this could actually help me because I can actually pass a little bit more conservative leaning bills uh, for this. Uh, let's go over to WIC. Let's put this to 175%. Okay. And then gets out of committee 12 to 8. And then gets sent to the floor. We have an amendment for it, 175 to 181. Uh, let's go ahead and oppose this, 45 to 55. No Republicans supported that amendment. Uh, and then we have the floor debate. President supports Senate Bill 1, so that's awesome. Uh, let's go to the, the WIC, and then 175, 56 to 44, gets passed through the Senate, even with, with, uh, some Democrat support. Uh, let's support the budget resolution, and then, uh, your bill has been assigned to the House Agriculture Committee, and then it has been denied a hearing by Donald Romero. Donald Romero has denied ourselves a hearing uh so that is unfair it dies as soon as it gets sent over to the house uh wow look at this political points have actually been improved we actually what got like what five political points off of these challenges now we're getting like uh 1200 uh political points that's awesome 
Uh, summary. Watch the Democratic presidential debate. Uh, we have Norris Klimchenko. Fiscal policy is very important to me. I'm very interested in thinking about political po uh, fiscal policy. How to deal with the budget is a very important question. Uh, I have come up with some ideas for reducing the federal debt, and I think they are likely to work. Wow, very vague. Uh, candidate details. He is the governor of which state? <clears throat> he is from... Uh, he's a Democrat. He's a governor. He's the former governor of Ohio, the state of Ohio, from 2006 to 2014 as a two-term governor. Uh, he was served one term in the state representative house, and then he is now a candidate in the 2020 presidential election primary. Um, so let's continue. You have Emmanuel Vasilyev. Why, why are all these guys Russian? Uh... Future generations should not be forced to pay off our debts. I believe uh, if we benefit from it, we should pay for it. To do this, we must raise taxes. That's a Democrat speaking. Uh, fiscal policies I am hearing tonight are bad. Yeah, I know. Uh, future generations, same thing as the same guy from the last... Same guy from... Same quote from the last guy. Literally, I cannot talk. Uh, if there is one person I do not trust with the budget, is it is, it is Mr. Applewhite. Do not let him anywhere near the budget. Uh, what does this guy do? He is a mayor uh, from Baltimore. He is the mayor of Baltimore, Maryland, former mayor of Baltimore, Maryland, from 2010 to 2018. Uh, he is also a former legal assistant and criminal defense lawyer uh, from 1999 to 2009 until he got elected mayor of Baltimore. Uh, let's go continue. All right, we have my boy Applewhite. Uh, no one can fix the budget as well as I can. Oh, okay. Uh, just as the last guy warned. Uh, but if we are allowed to enjoy the benefits of government spending, we should pay for it. We should not force future generations to pay for it. My fiscal policy will create the greatest economy ever. Well, I actually kind of support Applewhite. Let's go ahead and uh see what he is he is a graduate teaching assistant from 96 to 99 he is a visiting professor from 99 to 2005 he was elected to city council of philadelphia from 2005 to 2009 and then was elected mayor of philadelphia pennsylvania on uh, in uh, 2010 uh, so he actually served from 2010 to 2018 and now is becoming a candidate in the presidential primary uh, let's go to the next one, Lila Meng. My fiscal policy is simple. If you cannot afford it, don't buy it. To address the current debt, we need our, to either raise taxes or reduce spending, but it's morally repugnant to force uh, future generations to pay for our debt. Increasing taxes has to be a part of the solution for reducing the debt from Joyce Posley. And then Arthur Weber says, no one can fix the, bed, the, the federal budget as well as I can, which such such a large national debt, it would be irresponsible to cut taxes as some politicians are eager to do i will create the best budget you have ever seen mr posley has created a fiscal policy that is not even close to mine in a qual in quality mine is way better what was this guy he's courageous lazy ambitious mistrustful and vain so ambitious might actually hurt him uh he is the former mayor of davenport iowa so he's a good old iowan presidential candidate. Let's definitely uh see if this guy arthur weber wins the state of iowa uh, let's go ahead and go to the 2020. Well, actually, we are in week six of 2020. Let's go ahead and go over to the uh, elections and let's go to federal president. And uh, we have the uh, president and vice president right here. <clears throat> let's go to elections and then federal. Uh, we have the presidency and we have primary results. All right, Iowa. Let's see who wins in Iowa. Arthur Weber. Yes, sir. Wins in Iowa. I, honestly, I kind of just had a feeling that this man would win Iowa, but Arthur Weber gets 40 delegates out of the state of Iowa. We're going to be covering the 2020 presidential primaries uh, for this game. Let's go ahead and see with the Republican. We actually, uh, the current incumbent president is uh, not being challenged in his incumbency, so we will only be covering the Democratic primaries of 2020. Good Gamer says Biden might win the election. Yes, he might. Uh, Donald Trump also might win the election. Honestly, it's a coin flip at, at this point. <clears throat> All right, week seven. Week seven. What happened? New Hampshire. What happened? 
We are tied in New Hampshire. Joyce Posley ties himself with 13 delegates against Arthur Weber's 13 delegates. Arthur Weber seems to be the favorite in this presidential election. 53 delegates counts uh, as of right now to Joyce Posley's 38. Uh, when is Super Tuesday? When is Super Tuesday? Uh... Let's go to the next one. We are now in Nevada, I believe. Uh, does um, in the political process for those who are watching right now, who comes after? Uh, when does Super Tuesday come up? Is it gonna be after Nevada, uh, or is it when? When does that usually happen? I haven't planned been able to play TPP since March, since it would still more work on my PC. Uh, check candidate details for Joyce Posley, and then uh, yeah, Posley. Uh, in uh, this, in, in uh, Nevada, in Nevada caucus wins. Joyce Posley pulls off an upset. Arthur Weber has won uh, Iowa and New Hampshire, except Joyce Posley wins in Nevada. Does this spell doom for Arthur Weber's campaign come Super Tuesday? Uh, wet, let's go ahead and go. Uh, Arthur Weber gets 12 delegates out of there. Uh, Klimchenko actually got 11 delegates out of the state of Nevada. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next day, uh, the next week, and then we have South Carolina. All right, South Carolina, this is Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday is coming up next. Uh, Arthur Weber wins, 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 wins the state of South Carolina by two delegates. Uh, Klimchenko gets another 15 delegates out of the state of South Carolina, and Joyce Posley gets another 23 delegates. A very, very close margins uh, within the state of South Carolina. Uh, let's go to the next week, and we're going to see Super Tuesday. We're going to see some of these guys start dropping out. Leela Meng, Travis Applewhite, and uh, possibly even Norris Klimchenko might actually drop out come Super Tuesday. They are not... Uh, they're probably not going to be able to, uh, 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 uh pat the, uh, yeah, I can't even think. All right, let's go to the next day. All right, federal, and then we see Super Tuesday results. Uh, Arthur Weber loses the state of Alabama. Joyce Posley wins 36 delegates out of the state of Alabama. Coming to Alaska, Joyce Posley wins the state of Alaska. Uh, going to over to Arkansas, Joyce Posley wins Arkansas, Colorado Posley wins Arcan uh, wins Colorado. Uh, Georgia, uh, Posley actually wins by an even bigger margin in Georgia. Uh, Idaho, Joyce Posley wins in Idaho by one delegate. Kansas, Joyce Posley wins. Uh, Joyce Posley wins in Louisiana, in Massachusetts. Uh, in Maine, we have Joyce Posley ahead in Minnesota, fi 56 delegates to 51 delegates. Uh, in North Carolina, Joyce Posley wins in North Carolina. North Dakota, Joyce Posley wins. Looks like Joyce Posley, Arthur Weber was really the favorite going into this Super Tuesday primary, and Arthur Weber has completely lost uh, all of these contests. Uh, Joyce Posley seems to have won all of the Super Tuesday contests. Nebraska, Joyce, P Joyce Posley wins by two delegates. Uh, in New York, 198 electoral uh, delegates have been awarded to Posley, and then 186 have been awarded to Weber. Uh, Weber is not letting this nomination go lightly. Uh, po Posley wins in Oklahoma, wins in uh, the state of Tennessee. Uh, Posley wins by 12 delegates in the biggest prize of all, state of Texas uh, in Utah. Posley wins. Virginia, Posley wins. Vermont, Posley wins. Uh, Washington, Posley wins. And then in Wyoming, the one state that does not declare a winner on Super Tuesday. Nine delegates have been awarded to Posley and nine delegates have been awarded to Weber. Uh, let's go to the next day and see the delegate count. Arthur Weber is at 1,097 delegates and Joyce Posley is now at 100, 1,171 delegates in uh, just after Super Tuesday. Let's go to the next primary contest and Joyce Posley wins in the state of Hawaii wins in the state of Michigan and wins in the state of Mississippi let's go to the next turn more Super Tuesday or not Super Tuesday but more super contests going off uh in the state of Florida Posley wins Illinois Posley wins in Missouri Posley wins in Ohio Posley wins actually in Ohio uh Posley isn't Posley 
the former governor of Ohio. Let's actually uh, check. Check Posley. Uh, primary results. Posley, can I... 54% of the vote count, actually, uh, to 45. So that's... See, no wonder he's actually... Arthur Weber was actually uh, not able to win all these contests. He's literally for, uh, polling an average of 45%. 45 or 46, he's not even breaking 47%. 33% in Washington, uh, in Vermont. Let's check Texas. 36% of the vote in Texas, 33% of the vote in Texas for Arthur Weber. Uh, yeah, basically, basically, this was the Biden comeback for Joyce Posley. Joyce Posley, uh, we didn't think would win. Uh, l literally, Weber won in Iowa. He he tied it in new hampshire but then lost nevada and then came back on top in south carolina but then loses the rest of the contests except for tying in wyoming so that is huge 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 electoral upset for arthur weber joyce posley is set to become the next uh, democratic nominee for president of the united states <clears throat> let's go to elections federal <clears throat> Let's go to the next week, and then we have more contests. Arizona, 38 electoral votes, uh, 38 delegates over to Joyce Posley for Arthur Weber's 32. So Posley again wins in this next contest. Uh, Arthur Weber might be dropping out in the next couple of weeks. We have no contests in week 14. Week got awarded to the uh, presumptive Democratic nominee. We're going to go ahead and call him the presumptive Democratic nominee. Joyce Posley, the de presumptive Democratic nominee, has won 60 delegates out of the state of Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin, let's go ahead and check, uh, was... Got no primary results. Uh, let's see Wisconsin's results. 54 to 45 again he cannot break 46 percent that is a horrible job for arthur weber very upsetting that this man would not win this presidential race uh i predict Pos joyce posley to be the next uh d democratic presidential nominee says ap <clears throat> okay so klemchenko was actually the uh governor of ohio <clears throat> let's go to um campaign office where can i check on these guys because it is oh there it is um this guy was the senator of pennsylvania actually um he was a mechanical engineer from 84 to 2003 and then state representative from 03 to 05 and then he was elected a pen uh senator of pennsylvania from 2005 all the way up to over to 2023 uh so he is a three-term <clears throat> uh democratic senator for the state of pennsylvania a great job for him uh posley okay so let's go to week 16 and then week 17 all right, week 18, we have the presumptive Democratic and Republican nominees. Charles Bollard is now the presumptive, or actually, Charles Bollard is the uh, Republican nominee for president of the United States. He has been reelected uh, for his Republican nomination. Joyce Posley, uh, after a lot of, uh, of uh, uncertainty in the beginning of the primaries, Joyce Posley pulls off a major electoral upset in the primaries of the Democratic nomination and is awarded 2149 uh, delegates, 2149 delegates. All right, we are now wet past week uh, 19, so we are now in an election campaign season. Let's go ahead and do all rallies. We're gonna be helping out our boys in the state of Nevada. So hopefully we can actually uh, keep holding on to these uh, seats that we actually have. Hopefully um, the current administration does not get uh, ousted because if they do, then that actually might spell a lot of trouble. Good thing that our election is not happening in a presidential election year. Because if it was happening in a presidential election year, we would have a lot uh, that we probably... 
uh, one of the biggest things about r- campaigning and running for Senate uh, or statewide races in election years is that sometimes the down ballot uh, initiatives really hurt you in the long run because sometimes in the political process you have these moments where these wave elections end up hitting you and you don't know that these wave elections are coming because by the time uh, you see the election night results, you end up kind of thinking, hey, I think I'm... Uh, I think it's whenever certain states, whether it's Republican or Democrat, certain states are usually the bellwethers in this game. So whenever these bellwethers end up acting against whatever party you are for, uh, that is one of the biggest things that actually ends up hurting you, and you don't know it's a wave election until that very night. Uh, committee hearing on abstinence only sex education. The president actually supports it. Uh, let's go to all rallies, all fundraisers, and then let's do a vote on this. Let's go ahead and oppose this because I actually don't like it. Uh, still gets passed, so uh, hopefully it doesn't get passed through the House of Representatives. I don't think it will. Um, let's oppose it in the full Senate. All right, that was... That was uh, one of those things. Honestly, I have more friends on Discord than IRL. Same, same, same. I actually don't talk to a lot of people on Discord. Um, Attend all fundraisers. And 42. Got about two years until our own Senate election. All right, we are now in week 44. We are now in the final week. We just did all of the campaigning that we could do. Let's go ahead and watch this presidential election. All right, North Carolina goes to the Republicans. Ohio goes to the Republicans. Georgia goes to the Republicans. Florida goes to the Republicans. And Maine goes to the Republicans. So that is probably proving that uh, Pennsylvania does not go to the Republicans. Arizona. Colorado goes to the Republicans. This president is now set to win re-election. He wins Wisconsin. 273 electoral votes. And he wins the state of Maine. We helped him keep the state of Maine. This is the second presidential election in a row that Nevada has stayed with the Republican Party. This, uh, we literally, me in Nevada, has helped this president win the presidency twice. This is the second time that, I I, I mean, my, my performance as a senator just showed that we kept this state twice. This is the second time that I have seen Nevada stay with the Republican Party. If we can do that, if we are elected, re-elected in 2022, and then we go on to 2024, and we can keep Nevada in the Republican column, that is showing a lot of performance in our part. Uh, Definitely cannot lose Colorado. Colorado uh, is probably going to be flipping in the next election. So with Wisconsin, uh, North Carolina, and Florida. But... Can we keep Nevada's six electoral votes with the Republican Party? That will, uh, that is a question that will be answered in the future. All right. Um, Democrats are going to win the next presidential election. That's a fact, lol. Yep. Um, we'll see. Um, I'm going to be broadcasting the presidential election. Uh, PG doesn't have friends. He has followers. Yes. Oh, yeah. All of y'all are my followers. Thank you. Uh, I really do appreciate that all of you guys, you know, follow my channel. Um, I never really thought I'd be able to get up to, what, four, 5,000 subscribers and have live streams like these where, I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that, that like my content for my content. And um, I always kind of beat myself up about it, about whether my content was that they're really that good. Some Some people may say that it's not that good. Others may say that it's really good. Um, And I really appreciate it whenever I hear you guys tell me that you like my content. It really does uh, tell a lot and help me know that the work that I'm doing isn't going to waste. Um, So I really do appreciate a lot of the support that you guys have for me. Uh, Hey, you're right. Correct. And I agree with you. But yo, sup? Hey, what's going on? (laughs) Uh, If you can keep Florida, that's good. Uh, I would actually have to campaign in Florida. Uh, let's go to the next couple of days. State abortion laws. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oppose. <laughs> Three Republicans supp- uh, oppose it. Haha. <laughs> uh, determines whether states receive jurisdiction over abortion laws. 
uh, and then gives the states the authority to e legalize or illegalize abortion. So I'm gonna oppose that. Haha. -ha. Uh, I love your content, man. Thank you so much. I uh, and stop it. Thank you so much too. Um, I click I click so fast when I see you see you've uploaded. Uh, yeah, well, if, I mean if you have that bell notification icon, that's uh, another thing. If you guys want to see the election um, coverage that I'm going to be doing tomorrow, it's weird to say it like that, but it's tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow is the presidential election. So uh, if you guys want to see uh, me broadcast that election, and uh, we're going to be joined by Tripster, uh, definitely um, don't hesitate to hit the bell notification icon to be notified whenever that, uh, whenever that broadcast becomes available. Um, if you guys are watching right now, we have 24 viewers. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let's get up to 25 likes on this video. Uh, so, uh, just before we end this video, let's go ahead and get up to 25 likes, uh, before we head out. Egmo Gaming, welcome to the live stream. I'm gonna go ahead and put you as a moderator for tomorrow. Uh, everyone, welcome the new moderator for these streams, Egmo Gaming. I'm gonna go ahead and call him Jack. Uh, so welcome, 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 Jack. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be between you, Radical Politics, and New York Times for coverage. Uh, in my live stream, I may actually be checking in on uh, Radical Politics to see because he actually has his own decision desk um for this election coverage and i um i'll be honest a lot of the information that i've been getting has been coming from uh, red eagle i've been getting it from um let's talk elections from real american politics real uh, I, I i suggest that you guys go follow real american politics on twitter uh real american politics is actually uh partnered with red eagle and both of them basically produce about the same content but both of them are two different minds on the election and i've been following both of them extremely closely for this presidential election to kind of get the other side of uh the of the issues you know on the polls just to kind of see through the polls and see what's going on um so yeah definitely suggest that you guys uh, go and uh, do that. AP, since you've actually been um, a part of these live streams for so long, I definitely, um, um, I'll actually talk to you about becoming a mod for tomorrow because I definitely do need mods for tomorrow uh, because, uh, just so I don't really have to, uh, I mean, I just mean people that I actually trust. So uh, definitely, since you've been around for long enough, uh, definitely will consider you for a mod. Um, sup brother, I just ran across this game on Steam and just randomly stumbled on your channel. Thank you so much for political process content and I have a lot of previous content before. Um, definitely would suggest that, um, before he becomes a mod, can I time him out please? No. Um, <laughs> but, um, in, um, uh, I do have a couple of series. I definitely recommend my Minnesota series for, uh, for new, uh, viewers. Um, definitely would suggest that. I need to... Kind of reflect my uh, thing for that um i'm actually gonna go ahead and show you guys what i'm planning for this so uh since we're getting about into an hour into this live stream i'm gonna go ahead and uh turn this over to what it's gonna look like on uh 20 uh tomorrow uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and show you some of this and let's go ahead and show you the first general overlay. This is what's going to be shown when uh, we are going to, whenever me and my partner, uh, we're going to be uh, joined by Tripster60. Uh, he is actually uh, very much into this. I've known him for several years, and uh, he is a definitely a great uh, addition to these live stream coverages of presidential and other elections. So I do welcome that Tripster is going to be joining us. Uh, so this is what it's going to be looking like the first time. Uh, so this is the general overlay that we have. And then when we go over to the uh, 2020 election, let's go to the 2020 election intro. This is what it's going to look like whenever the live stream starts. Uh, so I'm going to, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, basically, um, just whenever the election starts and then uh, whenever we go over to election and then whenever we actually start talking, this is what it's going to move to. And then uh, just um, let me go ahead and do this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys exactly 
what uh, election night might actually look like. Um, so I'm gonna be covering multiple states at one time. And I'll go ahead and get two of them to show for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the political process, but I do wanna show you guys what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, so let's go here. So this is gonna take me a minute actually. Uh, speaking of, Donald Trump is about to hit 45% before the election. This is a critical number for him to win his re-election bid. Uh, if he gets up to 45%, uh, he's been on, on like a last minute surge. He got from 41% as a low, uh, 41, about 41, 41.0 to 41.2. And then now he's at 44.4%. That is huge. Uh, let's go to, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up, uh, Texas and then I'm going to pull up, uh, well, actually I'll do it like this. So we have Indiana, then we have Kentucky. then Donald Trump is also showing a lead for Iowa. Yeah, he's leading like seven points in Iowa. Uh, what website will we be getting results from? Please cover the Washington gubernatorial election. Oh, definitely. I definitely will uh, uh, cover that uh, gubernatorial race. Since uh, some of the states are going to take a long time to actually get released, uh, I'm going to be covering a couple of them. Um, so if you have suggestions on what I should be covering, definitely put them into the Discord. If you guys are not a part of the Discord, uh, definitely join the Discord below, uh, in the description. I, and, if, and if those don't work, tell me and then I will actually <coughs> uh, show, I will actually do that. Okay, so let's do this. And I think this looks, I think this looks really cool. And I think some of you guys will actually like this. Um, so. All right. So then, lastly, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna get the results. And I've actually, ta I've, ta I've taken a little bit to set this up. So um, I really do hope you guys actually like this. Uh, okay, let's do top right, and then, I don't know why I'm talking out loud, but, oh well. Alright, then, transition. Alright, this is what it's gonna look like, I think I kinda minimized it, alright, that should work now. Alright, this is what it's gonna look like on election night, uh, so you actually see that, um, I have two different election night results. We have Kentucky and then we have Indiana. Uh, so one of the things that I actually do is what I want to do is I want to cover both of these elections at the same time so that we can uh, have something to look forward to. And then right down here, I actually have the uh, closing time. So as the elections, as the times come to a close, this is also by Eastern time. This is Eastern time. And I have to make that a reminder. Uh, this is e by Eastern time. And as the elections come to a close, uh, I will show whichever ones that have not closed yet but are yet to close that is what i'll have on screen so then what i have here is i just have indiana and kentucky and then as the polls come to a close then i will actually have uh uh, these results showing just so I don't have to, you know, click back and forth between windows and all that. So, uh, definitely this is going to be fun to cover and watch as the election night comes to a close uh, and as the uh, results pour in. So, definitely uh, tune in to watch this uh, as the election comes uh, tomorrow. And I'm probably going to be going out for a little bit, but the uh, live stream should start at about 5 o'clock Central Standard Time. I think 5 o'clock Central Standard Time is whenever the, the first polls should be coming down to a close. Uh, I am in the state of Texas, so I'm off of Central Standard Time. Uh, Texas is going to be extremely important. We're definitely going to be covering it in this election. Uh, so then, uh, as I have this... Let's look here. 
And then just as a general overlay, what I'm going to have whenever I'm not covering the state results and also the bottom two covered where you see the Kentucky and Indiana, uh, these, um, I actually have four of these windows set up so I can actually cover four different state elections at the state at the same time. And then this center part right here would still be there. Uh, and then what I actually have is I have another window and then this I could just cover things at one time and then I could just say, you know, Trump is at 44%. We could go over to uh, 538 and then we can talk about, you know, how wrong Nate Silver is going to be in this election. Uh, he's saying here that he, I'm here to remind you that Trump can still win. So this is something that I can actually do. Um, I really actually am excited for tomorrow because uh, I have OBS completely ready. So I'm definitely excited to see uh, what happens. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some of Nate Silver's stuff. Jesus Christ, he has a 10% chance that Trump wins. Uh, but actually in Nate Silver's, uh, I'm here to remind you that Trump can still win. He basically says that let's have a few basic facts. The reasons that Trump's chances are in our forecast are about 10% and not zero. As in 2016, Trump can put, could potentially benefit from the electoral college and then projected margins in tipping point states are considerably tighter than in the margins in the national vote. Uh, and more specifically, Joe Biden's lead in Pennsylvania. The most likely tipping point state, according to our forecast, is solid but not spectacular. Uh, spectacular about five points in our polling average so let's go ahead and look at what's um let's go ahead and look at what trump is doing in pennsylvania he actually had a low uh right around the middle of october of 43.7 percent in pennsylvania now he has 45.4 percent this is huge so uh pennsylvania is going to be a very close state uh it's gonna be very interesting but we're not gonna get these election results on election night uh pennsylvania actually might uh they have about two million uh early votes out there and about 70 percent of those early votes are democratic ballots so pennsylvania even though they know what the party lines look like uh, those mail-in votes are going to take a couple of days to actually count. Look at this, 46% uh, that Joe Biden was pulling in uh, the state of Pennsylvania. Then he went all the way up to 49%, and then he's just kind of stayed around that number this entire election cycle ever since June. I mean, ever since June, Joe Biden has just had a consistent 50% lead in the national polls and in state polls, depending on what state you're talking about. Over in Nevada, uh, let me actually show you guys something. Target Smart is a uh, th is an election thing, uh, basically where they go off of a national uh, models, and then when it, if I actually go over to Nevada, uh, in Nevada, fifty one point four percent. Let's actually put this in the final election. Fifty point six percent of the vote was given over to the Democratic uh, Party in the. Uh, in the 2016 election in tw in uh 2018 that went down to 47.6 percent in 2020 their projected margins are 45.9 percent as a base but republicans in 2016 39 percent in 2018 48 44 point eight percent in 28 in 2020 that number is now 45 percent this is the closest that Nevada has been in a while. If you actually look, these numbers were actually basically tied for the longest time, for several days actually. And then now the Democrats are barely, just barely even edging out in the state of Nevada. Nevada, of all places, is going to be extremely close in this final election. Uh, let's look at, I mean, uh, Texas is okay, but then you go over to Pennsylvania and 43% uh, in 26 in 2016, 44% in 2018, and now 62% in uh, 2020. So this is not really good news for the Republicans, but this number has been uh, this 30% number has actually been trickling upward ever since uh, around a couple of days ago. So. Uh, but the Democrats continue to widen their leads in uh, the state of Pennsylvania. So this actually means that what almost 1.5 million Democratic ballots need to be outcasted in the 2020 election. The Republicans now are about 600, no, actually 700,000 
votes. So that means they could literally get about a million more votes and then they could actually overtake the Democratic ballots. The thing is about this Democratic ballot, this actually should probably be the Democratic Party turnout. At least 60% of this is Democrat. This is all of the Democrats' energy. So that's one of the biggest things about this election is that Democrats are underperforming in a lot of these different states. Going over to the state of Florida, Republicans have taken a one-point lead in the state of Port and in the state of Florida. Democrats had the lead for a considerable amount of time for about from the end of September all the way up until about just a couple of days ago and Republicans have taken the lead in Florida. So this is a bad, bad, bad news for Democrats in the state of Florida. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and go back to uh, the political process. Gonna go ahead and get the political process back in the, uh, back in uh, showing. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and look back at chat since I have not looked at chat. Uh, let's, my final prediction is 280 to 258 in favor of Trump. I think Washington is lean or tilt Democratic. I, I would not say that about, I would not say that about, uh, uh, Washington, at least. Uh, King Xavier, since you're from Georgia, what is Georgia looking like for Joe Biden? Do you think that Joe Biden will edge out a victory in Georgia? Or do you think Donald Trump will keep Georgia? Uh, once Trump leads in a credible Nevada poll, I might be convinced it could flip. Um, well, this isn't even polling. I'm not even looking at a poll whenever I'm talking about that. I'm talking about, uh, literally the votes, the vote margin. I mean, it was as close as 500 votes in the state of Nevada. That is horrible news for the Democrats. Um, I'm at the governor's race. Oh, you're okay. You're talking about the governor's race. Um... Alright, guys, if you guys liked this video, go ahead, and leave, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. I want to get up to 25 likes in this video. So if you guys have not liked this video, please like it. Um, if you guys want to see more, uh, definitely hit that bell notification icon. And do not miss that stream tomorrow. I'm going to be start. I'm going to start the stream at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you, if you uh, miss the stream, I'm going to be streaming basically that entire night, um, so don't miss it. I'm going to be streaming for several hours. I'm going to be talking about the results, what the candidates could have done differently, and more. So definitely do not miss that stream tomorrow with me and Tripster. And if you guys want to see more of Political Process, definitely leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you have not joined the Discord, join the Discord so you can be notified whenever I go live tomorrow. Uh, and let me get that link for you guys real quick and then I will be on my way all right and I'm gonna post that in the chat and that will be it thank you guys so much for watching this video I'll see you guys in the next one